today's lesson is uh, Peter Cartwright. He was a Methodist minister. He was born in 1785, so he's 20 years older than Joe. Started preaching in 1803. He bumps in to the Mormons in Illinois. So there's about 10 pages here. I'm just going to read you a couple paragraphs. If you're inspired, you can read the rest. At an early day, after they were driven from Missouri and they took up their residence in Illinois, it fell to my lot to become acquainted with Joe Smith personally, and with many of their leading men and professed followers. On a certain occasion, I fell in with Joe Smith and was formally and officially introduced to him in Springfield, then our county town. We soon fell into free conversation on the subject of religion and Mormonism in particular. I found him to be very illiterate and impudent desperado in morals, but at the same time he had a vast fund of low cunning. He then goes on to describe Joe trying to appeal to his vanity. Uh, he says, you would be honored by countless thousands if you would join up with us, you and your Methodists, and have uh, all of the good things of this world, all that the heart could wish. He's at a uh, camp revival meeting. Some Mormons show up. They set themselves off on one side and during intermission start having uh, religious experiences. An old lady Mormon began to shout and after shouting a while she swooned away and fell into the arms of her husband. The old man proclaimed that she had gone into a trance and that when she came to she would speak in an unknown tongue. Well, Peter sees this and interferes and upsets the husband. I reply, sir, this is my camp meeting, and I will maintain the good order of it at the risk of my life. If this is your wife, take her off from here and clear yourself in five minutes, or I will have you under guard. The old lady slipped out and was off quickly, and so on. In regards to being expelled from Nauvoo and uh, Joseph Smith's death, great blame has been attached to the state. The citizens of Hancock County, in which Nauvoo is situated, for the part they acted in driving the Mormons from among them. But it should be remembered, they had no redress at law. For it is beyond all doubt that the Mormons would swear anything true or false. They stole the cattle, plundered and burned the houses and barns of the citizens, and there is no doubt they privately murdered some of the best people in the county. And owing to the perjured evidence, always at their command, it was impossible to have any legal redress. Now, if you've studied this subject, you've heard this before, haven't you? And if you look at my Mormon Strangite, uh, King Strang videos, you'll see the same story. Here's another encounter with someone who uh, converts to Mormonism. There was a gentleman in this place who had been very wicked, a noted gambler by the name of W. He was an esquire. He got under serious concern for his salvation and sent for me. I went and prayed with him. After talking with him a little, he got up deliberately, went to his desk, took out his cards, stepped to the fire and pitched them in, making a whole burnt offering of the cards. Shortly after this he found peace and was, I believe, silently converted to God. He seemed to have the innocence and simplicity of a child. He was very zealous for God, and he gave great promise of doing good. He had a brother-in-law and sister in Nauvoo, among the self-deluded Mormons. His sister professed to have the gift of tongues, and his brother-in-law the gift of healing all manner of disease and interpretation of tongues. Well, guess what happens? They told him if he would join the Mormons and live faithful, and that in a very short time he would have the gift of tongues and the gift of healing, and so that by faith he would raise the dead as did the first Christians. The fatal bait was gulped down. They took him to the river and ducked him. And when I saw him, he was in daily expectation of those great gifts. 
I told him he would never receive them, and he promised me if he did not, he would leave them. What has become of him I know not, but it is probable he is in Utah and has 15 or 20 wives. So there's some Peter Cartwright, Methodist minister. He was one of these people that rode all over the country on horseback in 1805 and uh, through the snow, through the creeks, no bridges, no ferries. He did it the hard way. In fact, he complains in here about finding pews in churches and that this kind of thing creates an unfavorable distinction between those of money and those that don't have money. So here's Peter Cartwright, 1856, his autobiography. 